assaulted him and the time he got into the call, that means he comes in empty handed. Pimp, don't bring a knife to a gunfight because we're going to shoot you down. It's Navi and Anson. It's starting off on train and the time has come, my friends. So Sunny and Yampy over towards the T side. They've got tons of utility. The three flashbangs, Molotov still on them. And of course, well, we're just going to get uh, the old splitteroo here. Two players towards the box halls for Ents and three lurking out Ivy. Ooh, electronics grenade. Not half bad. And obviously that comes in at the same time as the T's start to pressure into the B bomb site. They've got two counter terrorists allocated towards there. And electronic. Good for a second headshot. Simple gets called in. And if there's two players you do not want to walk into, it's electronic and simple shoulder to shoulder. Ariel, he's going to try at the B site and he gets a couple kills, but he doesn't have the bomb. And this is a legit one versus five attempt. So good luck. I know. They'll need more than luck on top of that. So here's the first one. Oh, great peak. Well, we are on for it. Yeah, he has 18 HP, but he has enough time to get a lurk kill. And it really comes down to how well Navi decided to play this round. So Ariel, how smart are you feeling right now? Ah, old bombs coming up. Could be a headshot. Oh, Swing. well, it is. It just isn't in favor of Ariel. So, Navi, go ahead, pick that one up. And it, it's because they are so aware of Ivy the entire time. We saw the deliberate grenade down Ivy, even without spotting a player. Smoke here, electronic, you know, full face forward. And I think all the while they've got the B pressure going on simultaneously. But Electronic seems unfazed by this information. The whole time he's concerned about doing his job at Ivy and no less. And so it feels like uh, this is a big read here by Navi. Yeah, I definitely see a world where that three player Ivy push could have coupled very nicely with like an old bomb wrap around into the B site. With the success Ariel had on that three piece, it could have been good. But uh, they found Electronic and he comes out swinging. So that's, that's two 3Ks in the very first round of this series. Fingers crossed that we get the explosiveness that we would hope for between two teams like these. Simple, doing a great job of just picking up the pieces. That right there is a 4K on the anti-eco. Let me get your thoughts, Connor. How do you feel about Navi recently? And just, what do you, what, do you, like, we, with all these matches, we obviously say, okay, on paper, there's this. There's Navi, right. higher ranked team, Ensis form, more in question, even in lands. And then uh, and then we think, plus, then we take it to online and we go, okay, things are a bit more even. So where do you stand now? Do you feel like Navi are definitely in favor in the series? Or do you think their form's questionable enough that Ents could maybe pull a map or two? I think their form was more questionable, and I think that it's going to solidify itself in the, the coming weeks. So right now, I would side with Navi. Um, I think that the way of which they kind of pieced the match against Vitality yesterday was really convincing. That's the one that kind of got me. In terms of my official DreamHack Pick'ems at uh -huh. DreamHackPick'em.com, uh, I actually made the error of switching to Vitality yesterday, and then Navi just kind of whooped them. Um, so, uh, so yes, I am very much alongside. I was, I would, I'd say I'm right there with Boomich when he says that you know returning to this realm of online Counter Strike makes just all matchups more 50-50, and that it can it can uh, it can hinge on the preparation you make for your specific opponents. So, so that, I think that, that when I heard him say that, I really agreed. I, I appreciated that you know that he really did give an em emphasis to the team that prepares more. He said the team that prepares more should win more, which is great. You know, that adds merits to a situation where there may be more randomness. And Look at what we have. It also tells me that if he is approaching matches with that mentality, then he better be doing exactly what he says and getting ready for each and every opponent. You consider that they have Blade behind them, and I truly believe that that is a prepared Navi coming in. But yeah. continue. Do as I say. And uh, we've got the Jampy Lurk. He's got bomb facing forward. They're definitely crushing outside, but he's entering out. So once he gets spotted, this might get interesting. Nobody watching down Ivy and Sergei and Sunny both get kills. Yeah, look, they're starting to crack open this site. Poor Flamey doesn't have any cover to work with, and Perfecto walks right out the smoke. So three piece from Sunny, but simple four seconds. Oh my god. Oh my god. There is a world where he stops the bomb. They somehow don't kill him. And he steals that. You have Could to have gotten wild. That. You have to appreciate that he didn't just spray immediately. He actually just took a second, but it still didn't work. Now, the setup is a bit questionable this late into the game. So I think I must have missed something because Navi didn't have anybody back CT, nor anybody back six watching Ivy, nor anybody five watching Ivy behind them. Instead, they had the e box player, a player Z, and they were just able to get crushed, I think, from the bomb train setup that they had going on. So. 
completely unaware of the thought that it could have been an Ivy crush. But to us, it seemed like there should have been some kind of notice. Okay, I think he gets. I think that's a robbery. I want to say that that is fair. a complete robbery. He was so close to him, and I think like I saw the reflection of the tase in his glasses, and still there was no kill. I can't believe how 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 is that possible? To do ninety two damage. I am uh, I'm a part of the all or nothing Zeus club. You know, it should be a hundred or zero. Sure. Maybe it means you got to reduce the range a little. Maybe but yeah. I feel like I feel like doing zero damage sometimes feels better than doing ninety-two and not getting that kill. I can understand that. Yeah, I, I get that totally. But just the USB feeling. And a P two fifty to work with because that Zeus empties its clip early. That was meant to be maybe the trick up their sleeve here in round number four. Ents about to tie this up at two apiece. Just a matter of when Perfecto dies, not if. And so we have it. Ents straight out the gate on this T side. Sure enough. Starting out off with two. We know both. This is the first time, by the way, that I think we've had all five players in the same cam. So Ents have figured out the setup. Ooh, Not maybe he missed the mark there. Look, he hit the okay. shoulder. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it looked okay. like it's a bit off. Maybe, you know what? He's lucky to have gotten 92. How the turntables. Indeed. Back into the but. buy. Off ready. Here towards T-Con. Simple posted. And the three T's run back. They were met by a lot of utility here. You can see at the front of the A site, Molly's burning on both sides. You, you know what, though? They only used one smoke on flash, I think, on this whole this whole kind of push outside. So uh, it, I wonder if they were going to commit out no matter what, or if there was not going to be counter utility. But in response, they definitely baited out some good grenades and a lot of attention. So back to Ivy now on the default. This makes T-Con a bit weaker for later in the round this early push Unless to it. Unless they decide to go take it. They, they the have, front runner. They have to know. They have to know that someone would take it. Sonny seems hesitant, and I don't blame him. It's more so that the CT has such a big advantage on this angle, and that even if someone's here, it doesn't, and you know it, it doesn't mean that you'll win. Now, they hear Boomich running out, but anything could be a bait. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they're giving up significant control. I feel like both teams not wanting to lose the round based on the first kill that comes in from T-Con. So they, they are very much hesitant. Sunny on one side with the Molotov. Looked like he was going to burn out those corners. Boomich ran back, comes in closer, kind of stutter steps. And a well-timed CT smoke towards Ivy is going to put Flamey in a prime position to try and lock this down. They're going to have to sprint through it. And they're going to do so with utility of their own. Flamey tucked close. Good first headshot, but not able to follow up with any sort of a kill. In fact, it's empty-handed on the forefront too, but electronic. He's gone ahead and stopped that bomb. Still, Jampy's able to keep one moving. Simple, at a distance. Snipes one down. Perfecto's nade. That stops bomb, and that's the round. Navi with a third. And that's not the first time we've seen the A hit come down to the wire like that. Ents really beat themselves here because if you pause the clock in the last 20 seconds and you look around at the spots and then you fast forward 20 seconds, basically no one from Navi moved or tried to secure any more map control. They basically waited. And so there was no difference between Ents walking into T-Con 20 seconds before that and, uh, when they, and when they took it. The only difference being that they ran out of enough time to be able to plant the bomb. So a kind of a mistake overthinking in that situation, but I will say, it was a strange setup for Navi to have, where Flamey was taking a very 50-50 fight versus IV control here at the back of six with no support from his teammates. They had a claustrophobic setup around Sandwich with one player at Olaf, who's also taking another 50-50. And then, of course, a Sandwich player who's not watching anything by himself, but can only trade. And for all of these reasons, it's like, why wouldn't Ents win? There's not really great spots for Navi to fall back, throw grenades, or multi-frag. And so that's exactly what happened. On top of, of course, Perfecto dunking the nade. Utility dwindling for Navi. Just that incendiary and frag grenade left on Perfecto, but we're at that 50 second mark. Still three smokes, four flashbangs for Ents. Very clearly enough to follow through on either bomb site. In fact, they could just go ahead and throw a fake here at the A site with that last smoke, but they do use two. Chance for a ramp hit, still very likely. You only technically need that one smoke to execute onto the B ramp. 
And it seems like that's what they're going to do. So pushing up into the T-Con from Electronic, that's actually huge because it could justify a rotation. But getting the two frags, well, that's even bigger because the B-Site holds strong as well. Everything going perfectly for Navi until Jampy gets that kill versus Perfecto. So this one enables the bomb plant, but it is a very dire situation. Nonetheless, Simple's patience pays off. And Jampy's going to have to try and do this with 12 HP. Good flashbang, but way too many CTs still standing. He goes for the peak and fumbles. Ents burning it down to the wire yet again. But Navi just getting all the kills really makes the difference. Navi may be expectant of these late round situations, so are playing it at a very so slow pace. And the 3-2 makes a lot of sense. They at least hold on to the T-Con for a bit longer this time around. And that final flash from Alu ends up baiting... Sorry, the final flash from Jampy ends up baiting Alu into a false sense of security coming right into the dry peak towards Simple. So sometimes putting all your stock in a flash can be a bit rough. I think Alu knew where the fight was going to be, but I don't think Jampy knew where his fight was. Quick headshot. Very rapidly down from the ladder. We've got still three CTs on this site. Eyes forward. No real Ivy threat, but we do still have Flamey kind of turning his head, understandably. Umic within the smoke grenades, he anticipates the hit, but Sergey doesn't even give him a chance to fight back. Here comes Flamey in from Ivy, only one and done. So there we have it. Ents picking up the pace, picking up the tempo, and picking up a third round. He do love that. Jampy still got a full kit of utility. They still got two Molotovs for the post plant if they had needed it. And we see the spots from um, Navi on the minimap here, two dying in front of ladder. Shout out to Sergey for hitting that shot. That was an incredible swing. I mean, he 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 popped him through the smoke before you could we could see with X-ray that he was visible on Sergey's screen. So that was pretty much done for for that. I mean, if your two players close up die versus your ladder and T-Con players, then you're not supposed to win. Your bomb train player has has a lot of work to do. So they couple a nice entry with the full on execute. Don't waste as much time as we saw in the past. A lot of things are going well now for Enz. And the only question I have for Navi is why aren't they being uh, why aren't they being more proactive more often? You know, why aren't they fighting for ladder more often? Why aren't they uh, pushing into Tcon more often? They've been they tried it, but they've been passive, or they haven't tried it, or they've fallen out. But I think uh, there's a lot to, there's a lot of merit to pushing those choke points right now. So we're gonna have the tack tack called for Navi as they talk about things. And the weird part is it's just like a low amount of utility being used, I think, between both teams right now. And I feel like a lot of dry fights are being taken, which ultimately is going to favor the T's more often. Honor, Honor killing. killing. Go for it. A, a Zeus kill in round four would have gotten Boomich his 32nd in honor of the 32-year-old Zeus he replaced as IGL. Wow. That's, that's honestly one of the most honorable reasons that I've heard of somebody trying to go for a Zeus. So, yeah, shout out to Boomich. Let's see if uh, throughout this series he can get that 30-second kill, you know? The the failed attempt in round four doesn't mean that that deep dive stat from AZS has to go anywhere. Still reigns true. Damn, I feel like Elliot's had a coffee this morning, dude. He dug deep for that one, and I like it. Yeah. Probably ground the beans with his teeth. <laughs> if you're doing that, I don't think you should. <laughs> That's man mode. I don't drink coffee, I eat it. Uh oh. Very close, very close towards Ivy. A lot of bodies, and it's just that scout on Flamey. His back is turned, so he is not going to have a good job of trying to hold this at bay. Great grenade, all the same, and Simple comes in quickly. Two versus two ensues. Alu looking for something, but he's scoped in, and Simple gets the best of him. Solid peek off of the train itself. Sergey, clutch mode. Dodges the frag grenade. And he's trying to hone in on Perfecto, but he can't win that duel. A big move by Flamey there to at least use the frag to slow them down. And then, I mean, simple, crucial clotheslining of a couple players as well. Hey, I think that's yeah, a well-stated point. They had to they had to do something, and Flamey was not really in a position to hold them all down. So the nade, that bit of AOE damage, helped Simple light them up. And yeah, without a player like Simple on the team in that spot, they probably lose because Ents pull out this other this lurk again, three up to the top of IP without throwing too many grenades and being able to take control of it nice and early to pull off these lurk. Uh, lurk explodes. They need if if Navi had off down Ivy on a few of these rounds, they would have been able to get a kill almost every single time.
Back to the B bomb site, perhaps. This one looking pretty straightforward. Flash, timing well, simple. Oh man, he is caught out into the open. Let's see if Perfecto can come up with more than one. Seems not, but electronic fast rotate. That's good for another pickup. Sunny's gonna deny the hard flank up the ladder. So a tough job here for Electronic and Flamey. If they even want to chance it, they are in position. They both have kits, but there goes their last piece of utility. They're gonna try and force the fight. Electronic, a fresh reload in takes to the high road, and this could be the piece they don't expect. He finds an angle onto Alu first and foremost, dodges the peak from above. Low HP here for what's left of Navi, and yet Electronic still guns them down. He chases, and it works successfully, but Flamey, he has to run. There's just no time. Sunny's gonna go ahead and pick this up. And finding their fourth, and I think once more here, Launders, it was the aggression that catches Navi off guard. Think of Simple's position. He would have never have chosen to be caught in the open like that. He was holding down the ramp. He had the idea that it was going to be a ramp play, but that CSGO timing, unfortunately for him, he jumps out of the spot right when he would have been able to get a kill. Now, the flashes were coming his way, so maybe he would have died sitting, sitting in front of uh, the connector. Maybe he got to the best spot he possibly could. Either way, as you're mentioning, you know, this contact explode on the correct timing ends up being the right play and ants yeah they're they're playing a very uh a, a very frugal brand of counter strike and yeah, not using too many nades moving at just awkward timings relying on that and it is working some of the time oh boy pistols prevail simple what are you up to he's gotten himself two he's currently sitting 12 and 5 you can never question simple regardless of the round regardless of the weapon Regardless of the situation, it seems. They're just going to cool this one off. And I feel like Ents, if they can get shoulder to shoulder, side by side, they'd be better off for it during this little pause, during the moment that the CTs have offered them to collect their thoughts and collect their forces. But the threat still looms near. Simple. He keeps peeking out. He's going to get caught by the ladder player. Another victim of timing, but Flamey, oh. he's still able to drop that bomb. And now Alu's gonna have everything to do. They know exactly where he's at, and he sees both CTs. Doesn't know if Flamey's been able to retreat, but has a great idea as to where he's got off to. Flamey's gonna go to the top of the train. Alu's gonna creep up the wall. Now he saw them both here. Alu, he just has to finish the little bit of damage that remains. There it is. He's low on ammunition. Perfecto's got that deagle, and Perfecto picks it up. Oh, a tough situation for Alu. He gets the dog tags on both last players, wraps the bomb, tries to get that little bit of damage in, but can't end up finishing it. And simple, another truly important 2k on the outside site this time with a deagle of all weapons of course and i love the pause you know the patience from ends in that spot to just wait it out but flamey comes through with this headshot you're like the last bullet on the cz in sandwich and he was just this prevalent th threat the whole round just denying them from being able to wrap on the a site so it's pressure up ivy once again but it's just pistols this time flamey's going to have a bit of an easier time denying and perfecto should also rack up some eco frags unless the deagle ends up getting its revenge oh it's definitely got the bomb plant and that is a win in and of itself retake should be strong unless there's a world where sunny somehow compromises them i mean even if he dies quickly because he is low hp he could serve as a distraction get some of the counter terrorists to turn their head back that sets up alu to swing on the ak let's find out he's gonna find simple first and foremost and sh oh my god he's onto the off oh sick flick to drop out flamey electronic has to run forward and ants give it right back i love this I don't even know. This is a 3v5, isn't it? Sunny comes out with this lurk, and look at this op shot. Just take a look at that. Oh, Woo! that's wonderful. The quick flick down, and of course, you know, it's the rest of the deagles to chime in, man. Perfecto needs to deliver more there, obviously. The But the, the, the two men spray down at, at, at ladder, you thought it was, or sorry, at Ivy, you thought it was over from that point on. So another eco that's going the kind of the wrong way. But it's... Okay, yeah. And then what's the, happening? I don't know what's happening, but it seems like rifles just don't mean a lot this game. I don't know where we are or where we're oh going, my God. but I like serious. it. It seems like everybody's come into the game to play today.
Just the scout for simple. Ariel's gonna go ahead and retreat, catching Electronic, who actually sticks around with the Deagle and it's the off. All right, yeah, let's see what Electronic can do. He's keeping the Deagle out right now, could just die on the lurk. Oh, he's trying to make sure that gets into the right hands. Electronic holds Old Bomb, the whole Old Bomb lurk here, that's, this sets up uh, Simple quite well. Oh, he's going to search. Oh, wow, he's going to go search out at Ivy. This is the lurk that I was thinking he should try to hold. Simple can watch this flank here. Perfecto's still inside. Saw him struggle last round. He's got a, a chance of redemption. You're about to come down the ramp. You could hone in on this. Yeah, really boils down to Yampy finding timing again on the flank. Smoke They're waiting. signals. It's a fake That's back. Run outside, yeah. They're just waiting because they had the Jampy lurk to the bottom of heaven. Some call it hell. And... Simple, knowing that this rotate came out, is probably aware. I, I like wouldn't this. even I wouldn't even be surprised if Simple clears this. I'm very happy to see Ants actually recalculate there once they're on the top of ramp. You know, they they didn't they didn't force the issue. It can be a little too welcoming to just charge down the ramp into the sniper of Simple, who is very clearly the king. I mean, look at the way Electronic goes fishing for weapons and brings it back. Yeah, and it's, it's essentially the that, Navi tax. And it's a fake that works both ways because let's say their a lurker gets caught, they can continue with inner. They know at least one of the players is outside. If their lurker gets information outside, he doesn't have to try to flank if Navi may be worried about that, and then they can rotate out. So there's just options get opened up by having Jampy move into that spot. And Ents, uh, Ents just barely win that round, you know. That's another round that looks quite ugly there for a second. And it's, in fact, following an eco that goes the other way. So, whoa. I'm trying to figure out exactly how much money is on the table now for, for Navi. Not much at all. Not much Not at all, yeah. enough. Not enough to buy anything other than some trimmings. A couple pieces of utility here. Mac 10 on electronic. He's got armor as well with simple. So maybe, maybe. Maybe it's Maybe. Maybelline. <laughs> They'll piece something together. There's the first one. Solid stuff by Simple. Posted up on ramp early. He easily avoids those flashbangs. This is going to start to expedite the hit into the A site, and they're going to be met by Electronic. Nice ladder attempt there. Just flew over Yamfi, but it doesn't work. Simple in with another op. And oh no, bomb dropped. Boomage <laughs> with the USP headshot. Gets that one onto the dirt. Sergey is going to swing out from ladder. They are outnumbered two to one, although they do still have more guns. Still, Ants just trying to slow this one. There's utility for Alu to try and maybe section things out, carve some map control. He hits Boomich. That's going to be tantalizing to hone in on. Boomich toying with him, though, peeking off of the ladder. There goes Flamey into the AK. Alu's able to swap guns back, but Sergei's fallen. So this has to be the big clutch from the finished sniper. And he is tunnel visioned yet again. A warning shot from Simple before Perfecto swings. How many eco round wins are we going to get on train? Yeah, I'm a little tired of it, to be honest. <laughs> well, these are, that's a nice shot. That's a nice, that's a very nice shot from simple. I mean, an, an op really changes the face of an eco completely. I mean, an op on a rifle round could get all of the glory just by getting the three kills that could result in a save. So it's not a surprise that simple can have a round like that and make it look very legitimate especially as he kind of protects his pawns that are running around with just their USPs collecting information. But yeah, to, to be able to look at this game and see that there's been like four Ecos or so, it's, it's to say that, you know, definitely not the best Counter-Strike is being played, but at least the Oppers are on point. Alu's here to, to pick up that trade. And this is a situation where Ariel only has a P250. Jampy looking for that Lurk. Flamey does not want to get lurked upon this time. Has got eyes down Ivy for once. Kind of. Yeah, seems short-sighted. Gonna hope he swings the op like a shotgun. Champy's patience could pay off. He doesn't have to make the first move here. We see that pressure from Ents trickling over towards the box halls, but he does find timing. Flamey tries to peek left into him and now that's man advantage that's a big opening for ents as well Whoa. check out 
Jampy just going all the way around towards CT spawn. He's going to occupy Simple entirely. Simple cannot walk away from this, and it's getting even better. Simple, he's lost his teammate over towards the B site, so he has to give away that flank. He has to let Electronic go pick up the pieces, which he will. But can he close with the clutch? He's got Sunny, at least that much. And Ariel's still just on the P250 as Electronic just has a field day. Haphazardly hopping all over the B site, but it works. And that's Nobby to an eighth round. One critical frag from Symbol, four from Electronic. Everybody else is falling short. And it just, it feels like it's a, a very lopsided game in favor of a couple of talents right now. We've got a 15 kill player on Ents. We've got a 17 kill player on Navi. We've got Electronic climbing to that peak. But man, these uh, site holds are very weak. We've got Flamey, who's getting kind of dogged on at Ivy a lot of these rounds. I think he's died four times trying to hold in a number of ways. And even picking up the AWP, which should have been the best remedy, he's gotten destroyed uh, in a perfecto. Not doing a great job in her as well. Ooh, this is the big dog pile. They try to charge out from Tcon. Sunny gonna keep that tempo going. Doesn't have the Kevlar to couple with the AK. So he may not be long for this world. Few op shots miss their mark. Electronic's gonna walk forward and seal the deal. He has 20 health left over as Sergey tries the 1v4. He was honing in on the bomb site, but now he's getting rounds on the T side of train. Is definitely doable for Ents, but that half was plagued by pistol round upsets. Curious to see if things stabilize now that we've got the fins on the defense. It's Scrawny and Launders still here with you to hold your hand the whole time. I'm leaning towards Navi now because Electronic and Symbol have 17 and 16 kills between the two of them. And look, Boomage gets an entry here on this inner hit. It uh, could go from bad to worse. If It feels like Navi were lucky to even get that many rounds, but because they have such extraordinary, an extraordinary duo, they're able to pull out that many rounds. But you can see how tilted the, the kills are in favor of those two players. Yeah, individuals really making the difference at the moment. And we've had some shining stars on Ents as well, just not as bright as both Simple and Electronic, who, speak of the devil, is still trying to fire off with the P250. He gets himself one kill. Boomich lends a helping hand. Sunny all alone now, and he's got that kit smoke worth saving. Run. Run for your life. Navi's coming. They're going to take that second pistol, and it all starts with Boomich just running down the ramp and, and just barrel rolling through Sergey here. That first mm -hmm. kill created so much space, enabled the plant off the back of it, so I really do feel like, you know, it, it looks so easy for Navi, but it definitely helps when Boomich does things like that. Totally. You know, pistol rounds are, never forget, rounds where anything can work as long as your entries go as planned, and I think that uh, Boomich shows us why. The amount of space created by killing the solo man on B is tremendous, and yeah, it just allows Navi to get in really great spots. And Simple, of course, does well to get the uh, the two P250 kills from that spot on top of it. Now, you mentioned there are stars on, on, on ends as well, not shining quite as bright. You know, that's Sunny. He's definitely, he's a star. He's a gas giant. He's not, he's not quite as bright as some of the other stars in the universe, but he's still really doing a good job of illuminating the current server. He's definitely had insane impact in a, a couple of these rounds. Um, and yeah, he's pulling over 180R for the team as it stands. On CT side, it's just that you're going to need the, the talent pool to be people to come up a little bit and for it to be a bit more spread out to make sure these holds go well. Now, we've got this kernel defense on the ASA from the CTs, two on the bomb train, one in front of it, and just kind of one, one in heaven, one in Z. So they're prepared to rotate, but they're also in good spots just to defend against A. I quite like this from the pistoling players. The only problem is, of course, just the USPs make it hard to get the kills. Yeah, it's a but little more elaborate than say, they're just five man old bomb stack. They're just teaming with trade potential though. It's to the brim. Although Electronic starts to crack into it. They're gonna go ahead and try to play off of the flashbang. So they had their few tools to play off of. Sunny comes in with one headshot, still staying true, as you said. He is a celestial body, and let's hope that his gravitational pull can uh, elevate some of the other members of Ents now that they're into the gun rounds. Two M4A1Ss in both Ariel and Alu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bring him down to earth, if you will, um, down to his level. So here, 
the CT setup. What's what's it going to be? This is most curious for me. Uh, we saw a very kind of uh, we got we saw kind of a drought of utility in that first half from both ha both sides. There wasn't much being used. And with the full kits in hand, they've taken kind of a standard control emphasis on aerial as the first pain point of the round. If Navi want to try to aggress towards outside, but they've turned their attention towards inner just slightly, clearing out the box holes, coming back doing the regular thing, but they clearly want to stay in this 5v5. Ooh, there's good potential for these nades. If they get out of Flamey's oh. way. Oh my god! <laughs> Friendly fire! My leg! <laughs> my leg? Oops. Ariel's just standing here on 100 health, like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Guys, I think they tried to nade me. We'll find out. Sergey, he's gonna go peeking in, so he absolutely confirms what's up. Navi, heavily bodied in the box halls. They're gonna go ahead and commit with their utility. We see, oh my goodness, three Molotovs, two smokes, four flashbangs, and only one body actually out for now. That's uh, Boomich taking the lane straight towards the CTs, who do lock this down. Solid hold, only mm. simple on the kill feed for Navi. Ents, they seem more than ready for that one. And they're sharing the kills. Everybody, everybody pitches in there. But I just, I love the, <laughs> I love the image of <laughs> like Ariel that? standing at the bottom. <laughs> like that. I like the image of Ariel standing at the bottom of ladder being very finished. Probably didn't even twitch, but just wondering what the hell is going on upstairs. <laughs> and now look what we have to bounce back with. Navi, just the deagles. But they are five deagles. Ouch. Great grenade. Boomage down to 51 already. Inner hold quirked out quite well. But yeah, they set up these mini ops to try to take as many dry duels as they can find. Sunny will not be caught off guard. And I think off of this maybe warning sign tries to reposition. Spam damage does go in, doesn't net them anything. There it is. I was waiting for the crack of the whip. Seems like Perfecto got it. So if, uh, if anybody had chosen Perfecto as the one player on Navi to actually get a deed kill this round, you win. He's going to get softened up by the frag grenade. Looking for the ace and a second. Nice shot there versus Jampy. That's uh, Navi still losing it out. So three round lead is all they'll have to work with. And stellar you start you, to a season side. They should have is like, like Perfecto gets these kills and just to emphasize how important they are is just to like, when he shoots, to show how much money is lost from the CT side. You know, like $5,000, $5,000. Like these are these are big numbers uh, that are taken down by a couple of these deal shots. So they definitely can have their impact and it can have a knock on effect into the following rounds, depending on how rounds like this go that follow. So Navi 11 to 8, but the lead dims and get closer. They pull off a very good behold and just as brought up, you know, they do a good job of spreading out the kills more evenly. Everyone pitching in. And I think truly that the pressure really is on Navi right now. They had a solid first half, but uh, Ents had done enough to kind of find comfort in this CT side. And that's what I'm seeing thus far on the defense. You know, this does not feel nearly as chaotic as it did when Navi was there trying to rob rounds away with Ecos, for example. You know, Ents, they're happily just walking around the front side of the A site. There's no T-Con pressure from Navi to try and screw over this defense. They're so comfortable, in fact, that they go ahead and go for the double peek down Ivy. And that's huge because Alu, he could very well rip a player off from Navi. They are walking forward towards him. And as he turns attention, it's going to be Jampy set up. 38 HP, so that is a weak point here. Peeks into simple, fumbles and falls. Alu collateral. Oh. And the three-piece just locks down Ivy on his own. He feeds Jampy to the wolves and then feasts. I love it. Alu dropping the goddamn hammer on these kids at Ivy. That's well done. Now, two on four, bomb gets planted. Interesting side bomb plant here. Uh, two T's can move a little bit more freely now that it's not planted on default. Of course, the problem of the 
material advantage here is Whoa. Alu picks up another kill, man. Four frags, the collateral. And not just a collateral that's like, wow, that's cool. A probably a necessary collateral to help him stay alive. Plus the follow-up kill to shut down Ivy in totality. 20 and 13 now is... Oh, sorry. That's funny. Alu's up there, though, I think. He's like... He's the, getting there. Yeah, he's... Helps he, when you get he the 4K. 17. I think your point about this collateral being necessary is very true. Because you see that repeak when he goes in for the third kill. Had it just been one frag the first shot and repeats into two, Max he's getting is, is the double. He's not rotating over to that B bomb site to have any impact in the retake either. So a necessary collateral comes in at the perfect time for the finished sniper. Flamey gonna drop down with the tech nine, just blown away by Jampy. MP9, very aggressive. And already now the setup for Navi, they were trying to hope to come into this, knowing in the back of their mind, hey, we've won rounds with less, mm -hmm. but this does not seem to be one of those robberies. And happy to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe here versus an eco. Sunny gets a little bit distracted by the player through the smoke. I love how Boomich just kind of creeps in on him during that moment. And this compromises the A site. So good to see Ents moving a third body over, but Electronic even gets the AK. They may want to reset and come in at this differently. Yeah, it's definitely a thought. It's a bit of a lurk game here. Do they push the smoke? Do they not? Are the CTs watching it? These are all questions. The flank is coming in from Ivy. Electronic turns the corner, but Alu deals with that problem, and Jampy picks up the slack. Now it's just two up. Perfecto and simple all alone. He's comfortable in these situations, of course. Three on the hunt. They don't want to give him too much respect, it looks like. Jampy, he'll be the first victim. Oh, done. <laughs> some damage dealt as well, and this is where things get a bit scary. Yeah, these are the kinds of rounds he can win, but Simple is going to come up short there. I just I just knew. I knew when I, he was positioning himself behind E-Box, and we saw Jampy just kind of running at him. You know, Jampy doesn't have as much experience versus Navi as some of the other players do. He didn't realize that by running and giving that audio to Simple, he was kind of digging his own grave. We saw that excellent first Deagle shot, take his head clean off, but no follow-up. So we start talking about Ents because they are now one round away, just one away from tying this at 11. Navi, they are going to come back in with a buy, so they could take momentum back. But speaking of momentum, so fast, Electronic already on the other side of this smoke. And, well, tons of damage coming out for Ents. Jampy's gonna block a bit of their utility. Ariel gets activated. He's trying to find kills and he will do so. Getting a big scalp and simple. Sunny, Jampy, both a kill apiece and everything's going to a T for end. Flamey's the last one up. He gets just the single kill and we are all tied at 11. You brought up how you, you really liked Ariel on Ents. You know, he does a great job of playing around the smokes here. There is nothing to stop him from pushing up because he's the man. His job was to clear a ladder. The smoke was down, nobody crossed out. He wraps around E-Box, kills Simple, which is going to be the most important player to kill because he's opping in that spot. His teammates are meant to rifle, to bait peak so that he can get frags in the chaotic situation. And he takes out that target first. We've got a fun fact here, multi-killers. Electronic and Simple have four triple kill and two quad kills between them on train. That's a round in itself. Like an ace is obviously definitively around one by one person but a 4k is basically the same it's virtually identical i mean you get four kills you should win that round every single time and and i think that's how we saw navi get to that nine round mark but it's a different story here in half number two navi had nine rounds to six of events ends have won already five rounds in this half and are tied i think this is oh hold on we'll come back to that because electronics not giving us time to think Jampy's going to pick up one with the AWP over on Ivy. Falls to the Tech-9. Aerial compromise. Tries to turn attention back, and that will work. He shuts down Boomage, but all the while, Electronic, he's making more space on the site itself because Aerial was drawn backwards. Now, Simple looks like he's just going to plant this bomb, calling Aerial's bluff. He doesn't move in until the flash is there, and it's a perfect retake. Aerial with the three-piece, looking good for Ents. Dealing with Navi's aggression, but I was going to bring up the double op between Jampy and Alu. I think this is uh, a strength that Jampy has over X7, and uh, I think that's something nice for this Finnish roster. Nice little uh, some some depth in their sniping prowess. Yeah, I can I can hear that for sure. But yeah, Ariel, the absolute doorman outside, very important here, pushing up towards E box, just making sure he's. Uh, 
he's oh, he's performing his acts like an anchor. What's the what's a 1.6? Navi are the youngest team in Group D. Perhaps surprisingly, only Heroic are younger in EU. That's incredible. I actually didn't know their average age was that low. I thought you know maybe uh, probably Flamey is now the old. Wow, is Flamey the oldest player on Navi? Let me go take a look. Oh my god, I think that that must be true. That's actually blowing Blamey, my mind. 23, Simple, 22, Electronic, 21, Boomich, 21, and Perfecto, 20. Wow. So yes. Man, I still remember when Flamey was the youngest player on Navi. That's so crazy. How the times change. So a bit of more aggressive control here. I like the new look on the CT side here from Ents. It's good to see some var variation in their approaches. And they allowed Na'Vi to try the same strat twice last round, had Ivy compromised, almost resulted in Na'Vi being able to pick up the round. If they had better guns, it might have been a different situation. The double peek towards Inner as well, calculated and uh, coordinated. So that's, you know, it, it would have been a hard, hard frag to trade. And Jampy gets one walking right into his scope as Na'Vi tries to suss out a new avenue to get to a site. I'm starting to be convinced here. And to CT side, it's looking good because it's proactive. You know, some rounds they're just yeah. playing responsively versus Navi, and other times they're playing responsibly, even though they go on the aggression. Like this calculated hit up into the box halls. You know, we've seen them forcing the issue. We've seen them taking initiatives, and I'm a big fan of that. Alu's going to miss a shot over top of the train, so this does open a route here. We've got Perfecto picking up a kill. It's going to be running through the train yard to his demise, however. Two versus four. Not a good look for Navi, especially with 20 seconds still left on the clock. Neither site has really fumbled. So, simple. It goes from bad to worse. He loses his teammate, and they're not giving him anything to play off of. Ten seconds, he has to walk away and save. In terms of the cliff notes of this half, there's only been good things to say about how Ents have played in their setups. The proactivity, as you if you talked about, you know, it's prophylactic sometimes, it's proactive sometimes, it's high on it's higher on individual skill than the first half, which is great. It's more even across the board. This is a half where Ariel has crossed the line from single to double digits and has had impact on a rifle round outside. Uh, it's one where they're not getting e code. So there's there's more things good to say about Ens's CT side so far than I honestly could say about Navi's. The, they even had a, a full on site hold on the B site that worked out quite well. What are we going to get from them this time? What's Navi going to do that makes a difference? Because they're running out of wiggle room, running out of chances. Very patient setup, it seems. Trying to hold Ivy honest. I mean, we have seen Jampy try to clear that out, so maybe there's a world where he hyperextends into the scope of Simple. I think that's what they're hoping for here with more than a minute left to play. Some pressure into the ladder room. Already holding the spot, clearing it out, and yeah, doing a good job of just making sure the entire house is clean. And as you mentioned, doing it safely, perfect the holding on its angle. How aggressive do they want to get into him? Probably not very. They're just instead going to wait for Navi to make a move, it looks like. Move starts to come through. Perfecto getting the first on the board, but they can't get past the T-Con unless that frag versus Sunny is the trick. Boomich already moving his feet to the site. Oh, but he's lost a teammate over his shoulder. Boomich still unable to find another kill on the bomb site, but that means he's been unannounced to Alu, who creeps right through the smoke and is still successful. Somehow being heads up enough to grab that frag, and I think we're looking at Ents winning train because this is just all too solid. They maintain the defense yet again. And we haven't seen Navi with much, so yeah, time to take a pause. Yeah, and so definitely and officially warmed up. They look very good now, and everything is working on all cylinders. Alu's coming into his own. Yeah, they they are definitely on lockdown mode. So in the pause for Navi, 
I, I don't know if part of this conversation is what to do economically. I don't know if they're going to entertain the thought of a buy. I don't think they should, obviously, but it looks like they're going to be a, in a half buy situation. I wonder if they're going to try their IV and back six wrap strat where they get electronic out. But I would be trying to weaponize him for the entries. You know, keep simple kind of third in. Maybe they can knock down a player on the side, catch him off guard if they're lucky. There's, there's holes. There's obviously always going to be holes in setups because you don't have enough players to watch every spot. Uh, what do Navi gamble on this round is a question. Man, we're really seeing the resurgence of the Tech Nine, eh? More and more often. Yeah, it's true. And I love seeing it sprinkled around with the Deagles still. You know, Tech not the best at a distance. Still the master class for the Deagle. But uh, if you leave those deagles on the back line and the Tech Nines forward, you can make magic happen. Sergey, very close to what is the vast majority of Navi here. Four members for the T's up in the box halls. Maybe Sergey decides to move himself forward here. We have found rounds where Sergey finds timing on this, and he does cut Flamey off from above. So suddenly, the ramp players, they had to pick up that trade frag, which they will. Electronic, a second kill off the Tech 9. Now he's got Simple trying to give cover with the AK because Sergey offered him the rifle. Whoa, Simple just jumps down into the bomb site. Electronic finds the three piece. Bomb falls onto the feet of Simple, and he's going to go ahead and plant. We've got a two versus two for Nog to try and keep them in this, to try and deny Entz that 15th round. Sunny taking to the top of the train. Simple, gonna blow his brains out. And now it's just on Jeppy, that long distance off. And they know where he's at. He tries to hide, but Simple hunts him down. And Navi, again, with less than rifles, picking up a round win. Of course, they can always be a threat. And Alu drops a uh, drop drops a shot there on Simple. I think he was he was coming down the ramp, and yeah, I think this was like kind of the most important one. But this is at a point when it's already a three v two situation. Bit of a rough go of it. Or sorry, electronic. I see. And uh, yeah, now now it's all, all already become a real game again because Enz could have had fifteen there, but instead they end up having to spend all their money on this round. Navi have a full buy up once again. And now that they have their heads back on their shoulders, you know, maybe they can find the correct approach to attacking outside. You never know when it's just going to click. You know, I think that that resonates with me. You, you are absolutely right. And I think I think sometimes Navi almost does that better than anybody else. You know, looking down and out and then just suddenly clicking as a unit, as individuals, as a team. Whether they can do it under the pressure of a 12-14 score versus the double ops that we have seen connect. I'm looking at Alu for another big multi-kill here to take his team at least onto the line. But this one's looking patient. We're at that 50-second mark and still no commitment from anyone, really. A little curiosity, yeah. perhaps, for Ants towards Ivy. But even then, they have no answers as to what the hell is coming their way. Sergey, he's about to have a rude awakening. He must be able to feel that this execution's close. Perfecto through smoke decides to walk outwards and Sergey's gonna shut him down. All lose op, hammering one home and a five versus three very quickly. They're gonna try to desperately turn tail, double back over towards the A site and that is where they're met by a molly. Arguably held on to because Navi showed nothing towards that A site. They never elicited any sort of a reaction. They never forced the utility to come out. So look how easily Ents win the round. One frag for Sergey, one op shot from Alu, and one Molotov spells disaster. I only wanted three guns is a small victory, but yeah, that that's like giving up match point is obviously what sucks the most. And all they try to do is throw a very simple fake. I think it, it can pull the attention of the player in Z, and that's why Perfecto walks out because he's assuming that a Sergey is not going to could maybe not be watching the ramp. That's the risk they wanted to take. So that's why Sergey looks kind of left out on his own is because they specifically designed that just to take a went tension away for one second for him to get out. But Sergey is just all too aware of the thought of Perfecto's lurk. Molly deep, flash follows suit. Champy sees the barrel. Because Electronic just turned to check behind him, he saw the barrel. Oh, this game can be a brutality at times. Now they definitely want to get his gun back. There was a couple of deagles in play. Now Simple has that AK. Gonna 
follow up with some utility. Gotta get this weapon over to Flamey so he juggles all the way back. What? El uh, not, be quite, or not low on grenades, but low on a player, and only have two full sets. They've got the smoke and the flash on Perfecto, but they haven't done much to try to gain rotations except for what we saw in that last round. I suspect anything they try to do now will be a bit obvious to end, plus the man advantage going in their favor at the moment. The double ops setup is very daunting, and you'd think Navi, you know, if they waste any utility on a fake, they're not going to be able to avoid getting opt. That's probably going to be their... The, the, the biggest trial for them. So instead, I think they're going back to just a standard outside take. And Ariel will be the first boss. And he has been a boss, at least in this half. Defending versus these pushes. We'll see what he can do coming up to bat here. Yeah. Whoever falls first for the CTs has Jampy's attention to try and hold, but they both fall. So that kind of puts things into question. Jampy, nice two piece. And he has a chance to now push up and wrap around the E-Box. This could give him a frag versus simple. And he's going to nail that one too. Jampy ace oh. to 